so when we're talking about aseptic technique, we want to make sure that we're using techniques such that our work and the worker, that's me, you, don't get uh, contaminated, right? Because we don't want to leave the lab sick, but at the same time, we want to make sure that the work we do isn't wasted, right? So the, um, when we're cer growing certain bacteria, it's only the bacteria that we would like to grow are capable of growing. Uh, source of contaminants come from a number of places. First and foremost, it's the environment. Right? The environment around here uh, is dirty, right? And you will find out that uh, bacteria are everywhere. So in order to start, what you want to do is grab some of this lab-grade disinfectant. And of course, you would like to do this before everything is there. Have an empty water. <coughs> Face. So we'll start off with a really nice wipe down of your work station. So then your work area is nice and clean. Alright, and always wipe a little bit more outside of your work area than you're actually using. Second, it's worker. Alright, so we are a huge source of contamination. So um, either wash your hands very well, right, or if you choose to wear gloves. Uh, often what I do is I'll just take some um, disinfectant, wipe it on my gloves, wipe it off with a paper towel. This can go in the trash. And then we're good to go, right? So now we are uh, as uh, aseptic or as disinfected as possible. Of course, we are not bacteria-free. Even with all this work, uh, you can still introduce uh, contamination, but it's the best that we can do for what we have, right? Um, the third is uh, the tools that we're going to use. And this is our sterile loop. I'm oh, sorry, our loop. This is what we're going to use to uh, manipulate bacteria with, and we will see this uh, many times throughout the semester. In order to sterilize this, we want to make sure that we stick it <coughs> in our Bunsen burner, which we learned how to light on the first day of class. Right? So to sterilize this, just stick it in the fire, and then wait for it to glow. Now that it's glowing, now you count 1,001, and then that's sterile. And usually what I do is I'll sterilize the whole loop and I'll end back at the loop part and then we let it cool. Okay? So this brings me to the third or what I lost count now, fourth source of contamination contamination. That's the air that's around us, right? And there's stuff floating around all the time. Uh, especially in a room such as this where there's uh, air conditioning and then the air conditioned currents will keep especially mold spores floating, right? So, in order to ensure best we can that we don't get contamination from the air, we work near our flame. Our flame kind of gives us this protection because as we know, hot air rises, so it's going to come rise up. And then as it cools, it'll cool and fall out over here away from the fire, right? So this area right around the flame is our safe zone. It's about as sterile as we can get it, right? So now this has a few implications. When we work, always work around the flame and many times I ask you where's your flame work around your flame it's not sufficient to have your flame on and then have it far away from you this does nothing for me right make sure that you are in front of the flame just be careful you are aware of the flames presence and you don't burn yourself when you do the work you can put stuff anywhere so if I got some tubes here I got some plates there I got some tubes way over here you can put them anywhere but when you manipulate them bring them to you, open them only when necessary, and only open them in the flame area, not out here. You don't want to be opening plates out here, only in the flame area. All right? So everything stays around the flame. Similarly, when I was uh, letting my loop cool, right? because remember, this is going to be crazy hot. If I touch this stuff, it's going to sizzle right? and kill my bacteria. Let it cool by the flame. So this is where I'm going to hold it loop is always going to be near my flame, not anywhere else. That's the basic setup for aseptic technique. Now, of course, each technique that we learn, each uh, protocol that we learn is going to have its uh, little variants or variations of this, which uh, we'll talk about when we talk about those, right? But we'll always refer to wiping down the bench area, keeping your, or working near the flame, making sure that you manipulate and open up only as necessary. So don't open it up and then look around saying, okay, what am I supposed to do, right? Only when necessary. I know what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to open my plate near the flame.